Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Rory Scammell. I'm going to talk to you about the history of the hurdy gurdy. This is a Donovan free zone. I don't know if you know Donovan, but he did a really annoying little tune in the 60s called the Hurdy Gurdy Man. It has been the bane of every hurdy gurdy player's existence since. <laughs> So, this is a real hurdy-gurdy. He was singing about a barrel organ. This is a stringed instrument. You have a wheel instead of a bow. You turn the handle, it bows the strings. You have drones, melody strings, and a rhythm buzzing string. All in all, it sounds a bit like the bagpipes on acid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shouldn't have run so quick. The origins of the hurdy-gurdy come up from about a thousand years ago. Uh, it's an instrument called the organistrum. It appeared in the south of Spain. Now, the origins of this instrument are unknown, but we can tell most of the technology that came into Europe at that time was from the Moors. Uh, this instrument was essentially three strings, a big sound box, and a big box full of keys. And what you do is turn the keys, and it would fret the strings. And as you bowed it, it would play chords. It was good for churches, good for singing along to, and uh, as I said, the Moors were the ones who brought over this technology for this instrument, along with the oud, which later then became the lute. Awful instrument. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> professional lutenist. Uh, we're everywhere. Uh, so the instrument developed into a one-person instrument that wasn't played by two people. This was a solo instrument called the, uh, called the symphony, which was, uh, bloody hell, this is too loud, which was uh, small enough to play by one. Uh, it had a simple row of keys, you could play a melody, and there would be a drone. Now, a lot of uh, heard, well, people who've heard of the hurdy-gurdy is sort of a associate it with troubadours, such as uh, lute as well. Uh, troubadours aren't actually the travelling musicians that they've been made out to be. Donovan fancied himself as one. They were mostly court-based and weren't that mobile. But amongst the instruments they were expected to play, yes, the hurdy-gurdy would have been in one of them. The instrument developed furthermore in the 1500s. The key box separated, it got its own soundboard, and uh, it became a lot more complicated. At the time though, some of the older instruments, because uh, instruments only last so long or go out of fashion, found their ways into beggars' hands. Not a good thing for the hurdy-gurdy, because the instrument then became known as a be uh, across Europe as a beggar's lyre, or well, just, uh, no, can't remember the German word for it. But uh, <laughs> here's some good depictions of beggars, uh, one of whom's got a hurdy-gurdy on his back fighting someone else, and that's uh, Capitano de Peroni on the far left, uh, playing his hurdy-gurdy. So the thing went out of fashion. Henry VIII actually banned it from England, but it came back into fashion in, the, uh, in France. As pastoral fashion came in, the French nobility decided they wanted an instrument, a small parlour instrument, that was small, sweet, had a good range of about two octaves, so they commissioned their best luthiers to build them instruments, such as uh, the Musette bagpipes here on the uh, top right, and those two lovely hurdy-gurdies, uh, which should date from around the mid-1700s, towards the late 1700s. Uh, in about uh, 1820, uh, the instrument developed furthermore and got a lute back, which gives it a lovely tone. Uh, this, these instruments are all traditional instruments from the Massy Central region of France, and this is where the instruments survive through to today. Uh, now, the instrument has existed all over the, uh, Europe, so in the Russia and Ukraine they had blind street musicians called the Lelinsky playing them. Uh, they were all massacred by Stalin. Uh, Hungary, uh, it survived. Uh, that was the Tekro. In Poland it was the Lyrokobova, which is on, on the left. And in Sweden, I can't pronounce it. Uh, it bloody awful name. But yes, uh, it doesn't exist much these days in Swedish folk history. However, oh, however it, the folk revival came along. 1960s, folk music's back in. Now, uh, there have been a lot of very good luthiers of late making some very interesting instruments. There's a couple of electric ones. Oh, the bottom left is made by the guy who made mine. And uh, at this point, I think it's only fair that I actually play a bit of music for you, because I've got some uh, boring slides set up. Uh, I've actually got to set up this mic, so bear with me. Ah. Ah. I do apologise to a sound engineer. Ah. Right. Oh dear.
might want to knock the mic down a touch. Well, thank you. Nice mic. Sure, sure SM58. It's lovely things. Mm -hmm. right. Rory Scammell, ladies and gentlemen.